Hi, I'm Melissa Bantuck in the Johns Hopkins Breast Cancer Survivorship Program. Today we're joined with Dr. Kayla Vispanathan. She's a medical oncologist here. She's also the director of the Clinical Cancer Genetics Program here at Johns Hopkins. Dr. Vispanathan, it's great to have you. It's nice to be here. So to start off, can you tell me a little bit about what a cancer diagnosis means for the entire family? So it can mean different things for different members of the family, but I think most importantly, um, for the first time, other members of the family start to get concerned about um, whether they will get cancer, particularly breast cancer in this case. And so it's really important to deal with that information. And so do you have guidelines of who might be a good candidate for genetic testing? So, um, so we have some guidelines, and these are specifically, for example, if the person who got breast cancer is young, so less than 50 years old, if they've had uh, more than one cancer, um, so it, more than one breast cancer in this case. Um, if in their family there are other types of cancers, um, and also if there is ovarian cancer in their family, particularly as well. And these, and when we say family, we're talking about particularly first and second degree relatives. And that generally means what? So a mother. So that's right. That means either uh, a mother, daughter, or um, basically aunts or or grandparents. So if a patient is recommended to have genetic testing, can you walk me through a little bit about what that may look like? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, uh, what happens is that if, if a patient has a family history or has um, breast cancer at a young age, they come to what's called a high-risk clinic um, in the U.S. And uh, basically what happens there is they get genetic counseling. So what we do is we get a detailed history of their family. We often send this information out to them ahead of time so they can actually inquire about their family history. We then go through and talk about particular syndromes that um, might be associated with the cancer they have um, and whether it's appropriate for them to actually have what's called a genetic test which can be for different types of changes in specific genes mm -hmm. and so this is actually the test itself is actually simple it's a blood test mm -hmm. it's more um, what is involved or what are the implications of the test is why we end up spending quite a bit of time talking through it that is implications to them um, as well as implications to other members of the family. Um, very briefly, when we think of implications for the mm -hmm. breast cancer survivor, which I think is important, mm -hmm. is depending, for example, if they have one of these mutations in BRCA1 and 2, which a lot of people have heard about, they could have an increased risk of a second breast cancer, so we can better quantify that risk if, they, if we know whether or not they have a mutation. They also might have an increased risk of ovarian cancer. Um, those are the two major cancers, and then there are other cancers like pancreas, um, if they have a family history of that, that we look at. If a patient has been identified as having a genetic mutation, what would be the next step after that? So if they, if we, once we identify that, we actually talk through how we would clinically manage, for example, if they have an increased risk of a second cancer, um, it might be increased screening, simply. Um, that is, in addition to a mammogram, we might include an MRI, and also screening for a longer period of time um, more frequently than they would perhaps if they just had breast cancer without this family history. It would also be thinking about their ovaries and talking about uh, removal of their ovaries at the appropriate time, um, and again, before that surveillance. Um, I think the important thing to note here is what it really is, is, is getting a better handle on their risk of other cancers mm -hmm. and a long-term management plan for them with respect to this. We also would deal with their families. I think that's important. So we would talk about their daughters. We talk about um, their sisters, their, their mothers, and, uh, their, and what they might need to do. Because some of them may have cancers. Others may not. These are family members. And so we often encourage them to then come in, and we would then work out whether they are positive for a particular mutation and uh, go on from there, a, a, a management plan for them. This really sounds like it goes back to cancer being a disease that affects the entire family. Absolutely, and I think an important point here, which I didn't mention earlier, is that you know family history is, is something that changes over time. Mm -hmm. So it, when a, a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer, for example, they might not have any other members in their family that have cancer, but then over time, there may be other people who develop all sorts of cancer. So one of the things that we, we often say is keep, um, you know, talk to your family, understand your family history, but then also revisit this every few years. And if things change, for example, come back and see us. So it's not a one-time point thing, but more something that you revisit over your lifetime. 
is genetic testing something that is generally covered by insurance if a patient has been identified as being high risk? So that's a really good question, and um, I think at least 10 years ago when some of this testing started, not so much, but now more and more insurances are covering this. Um, it's hard to give you uh, the specific insurance company, of but definitely, um, absolutely, a lot of them are, and so that should not be a reason for you to not come and see us. What happens nowadays actually is you come and see us and then if testing is appropriate, the um, companies that do the testing will help with that pre-authorization. To follow up with that, if a patient decides that they were interested in getting tested, are they protected? Are there rules or regulations in place to make sure that they're not discriminated upon later in life? That's a very good question. The first thing to say there, it is an ev that's an evolving area, uh -huh. um, clearly, because this type of testing will get more and more common, but is only relatively recent. But there are definitely laws in the U.S. Uh, there are federal laws about discrimination um, in terms of health policies. And then there are also s state laws, and they vary state by state. So you're going to have to discuss that with where you are. And, I, and obviously, this will differ outside the U.S. Um, and then the other thing is, in, t in terms of so that's health insurance discrimination. There's also life mm -hmm. and disability insurance. They are not as clear cut. There are not specific laws. And so we often encourage people to have those pieces in place before testing. Sounds like there's a lot to think about if a patient wants to go through and get genetic testing. Okay. Absolutely. And I think probably what I'd like to encourage is that people actually go out and find out their family history. Because one of the things that always surprising to me is that they've not inquired mm -hmm. and discussed this with their family, even very close families, um, uh, due to many reasons. So one is to try to understand what their family history is, and then if, if in fact there is multiple cancers in their family, not to be fearful, but in fact actually um, bring that to the attention of their doctor and get referred to these places, because often half the time we're actually reassuring people mm -hmm. that it's not a bad thing, and in those family members that have not got cancer, we're actually um, trying to help prevent them get cancer or pick them up early. And I think it, it's not an idea of feeling guilty that you have the cancer and that other people, you know, that you, because of that other people might get it, but more to help the family as a whole. Are there things that patients can do preventatively if they're, if they've been identified as being a carrier for a genetic mutation, perhaps lifestyle changes, diet and exercise? two broad ways. One is uh, there's clearly lifestyle changes um, that obviously is a discussion on its own but people can take. And then even when they have a specific mutation um, we now have preventive options and I think the, the key there is what we're trying to do is to either detect this cancer in other members earlier or um, um, prevent it from happening. And so, so I think the message should always be positive both for the survivor in whether we need to work out if they're at risk for second cancer or ovarian cancer, or in family members um, to, to get checked and, and understand their family history better. Thank you so much for being here today. You've def definitely taken a topic that can be very complicated and helped us understand it. Thank you for joining us. I hope this was helpful.